Good morning, good morning everybody. Dylan K. Johnson here and welcome back to a new video. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about one of my favorite specialty bars that I've ever used and that I currently own. I've got it here on the rack in front of me. It is the Bandbell RhinoFlex HD bar. So if you are familiar with Bandbell, you've probably seen or heard of or recognized their Earthquake and their Bamboo bars. Those are the two bars that they've traditionally been more known for over the past five, 10, however many years they've been in production. However, the RhinoFlex series, and I say series because there's three different versions of this bar, but the RhinoFlex series is actually fairly new. It's only a few years old at this point, I believe, and it's not a bar that a lot of people have ever seen or used or even heard of. And I'm gonna kinda of talk to you guys a little bit about why I love this bar so much and I actually highly recommend it to most people. Now, one of the things that I love so much about this bar is that you get kind of the best of both worlds when it comes to a traditional barbell and the earthquake style bars. What I mean by that is you get all of the oscillation aspects, the flexibility, the instability of an earthquake style bar in combination with the versatility of a traditional barbell. So what I mean by that is if you, if you are familiar with the earthquake bars, you know that the way you load them is by hanging weights off of the sleeves, meaning you usually take something like a band and you loop it through or around whatever weight you're using to hang, and then you just hang them off of the sleeves. And that adds to that kind of flexing and oscillation of the bar itself. With the RhinoFlex bars, the way you load them is similar in fashion to a traditional barbell, meaning the sleeves are very similar to a normal bar and you just slide the plates on. You don't have to hang the weights off of them, but at the same time, you can still hang the weight off of it and get a very similar style of movement to an earthquake bar. So again, it adds that extra versatility of it, allowing you to treat this bar very similar to how you would an earthquake bar but you're also able to do everything you would with a traditional barbell with this bar. And that's one of the main things that I really love about this bar is just how versatile it is. Now, I'd mentioned that there's different versions of it. So they have three different versions and the primary difference between all of them is going to be the weight capacity. Starting at the bottom, you have the standard RhinoFlex bar, which has a weight capacity of 400 pounds. Next up, you have the HD version, which is what I have, which goes up to 600 pounds. And then finally, you have the Super Rhino, which is their kind of, it's for the big boys and big girls out there that are putting up crazy numbers because that goes up to a thousand pounds. Now, the other differences between the bars is going to be in the coating or the texture of the bars. So on the base model, there's no coating and no texture between the sleeves. So you basically have just this very slick material that whatever the bar is made out of or whatever it's coated in, it's pretty slick, especially if you're in a hot and humid environment. And that's all there is on the standard version. You jump up to the HD and the Super Rhino and they have what they call a carbon fiber knurling on the center of the bar, which you can see here, this gray section of the bar. Now, I wouldn't call it a knurling per se. It's basically just a textured carbon fiber that they've wrapped around the center of the bar in order to help it stick to your back. They have this on both the HD version and the Super Rhino, and they don't have it again on that lowest model, the standard Rhino Flex bar. Personally, I really like it. It helps prevent it from slipping off your back. If you're just getting the standard version, you can probably get away with just taking some grip tape and wrapping it around the center of the bar. Um, but again, it just really helps the bar stick to your back when you're doing things like squats. Now the next difference is between the HD version and the Super Rhino. On the Super Rhino, they have a textured coating that covers the rest of the bar. You can't quite tell on my bar because I've added grip tape in order to, again, add some grip to this bar, but without it, it's basically just a smooth surface from the end of that centered textured knurling to the sleeve of the bar. So I personally would recommend adding grip tape to this, whether you get the standard version or the HD version. I haven't personally used the Super Rhino, so I don't know exactly what that texture feels like. It looks fairly abrasive, so it looks really nice, but that's one of the main downsides of this bar and of the lower end version is that this area where you would normally grip the bar or where you set it on your back is very slick. So adding that grip tape really helps aid in gripping the bar whenever you're doing any kind of pressing, pushing, pulling movements, whatever it may be. I personally would recommend doing that. I'll link what I use down below in the description. I just got it off of Amazon. I believe it's just hockey tape. 
Uh, and the way I actually did this was I set this bar down next to my Ohio power bar and then I marked where the power rings are um, so that I could have a reference point when I go to set up for things like benching. So I would recommend doing that so that you have, again, that kind of nice reference point. I just set it down, marked where the power rings are, and then I wrapped just the rest of the bar in a couple layers of that hockey tape. So those are the primary differences between the three different versions of the bar. Now, when we get to pricing, as of filming this video, the standard RhinoFlex bar is currently priced at 329. The HD version, I believe, is 369. And then the Super Rhino is 625, and that's all US. So you can see there's a very big price jump from the HD to the Super Rhino. For most people, I would recommend just getting the HD version, unless you're not even close to pushing that 400 pound weight capacity of the standard RhinoFlex bar. For most people, again, I recommend the HD version as it's only a few extra dollars compared to the standard version. So that's kind of what I recommend. Now let's quickly talk about some of the negatives or the downsides to this bar. First and foremost is the weight. With this bar, I'll see if I can do it here, if I can find this balance point. Yeah, there we go. This bar only weighs 10 pounds, meaning I can literally pick it up with a single finger. So that has its upsides and its downsides. Upsides mainly being it looks like you're lifting a lot more weight for the gram. <laughs> so you throw on some bumper plates or whatever you may be, and it looks like you're lifting an extra 45 pounds or an extra 35 pounds than you actually are. But the main downside is that this bar is very susceptible to tipping. So you have to be extremely cautious in how you load the bar. For a lot of home gym owners, you're working out alone. The best way I've found to actually load this bar without it tipping on you is to either have a second person come in, hold the center of the bar down like I'm doing right now while you load each end, then you're good. Same thing when you unload, have somebody hold down the bar, unload both plates, and then you're good. But the way I do it when I'm all alone is I actually take one of those chains that I have behind me. They're uh, 5 8 inch, six foot long sections of chain that weigh about 20 pounds each from Titan Fitness. You take one, drape it over one side of the bar, then you load the opposite side. Push the plate all the way up to the sleeve, then you go to the other side, load on another plate, and you're good to take the chain off and start using the bar. Now, when you're unloading the bar, exactly the same put the chain on one side, unload the same side as the chain, then you can unload the other side. Then you're safe to use, or then you're safe to take the bar out of the rack, it's not gonna tip on you. So that's kind of the one biggest downside of this bar. Now the next issue is with regards to what plates you're using or what plates you have. So they actually state on the website that it is not compatible or they do not recommend using it with calibrated plates or any plates that have a very tight center hole tolerance. So if you guys know anything about my gym up until recently, I only had rogue calibrated plates. They're steel calibrated plates. So I will say it does work. So you can use the calibrated plates on this bar. However, it's not gonna be very fun. Sliding them on and off the bar because the center hole tolerance on those plates is so tight is a very tedious and difficult task. Not impossible at all. You guys have seen me use this bar in the past. It's definitely doable, but you have to be very careful in how you get them onto the bar. And I've actually had the same issue with my Rogue deep dish plates. Those are machine plates, so the center hole tolerance on them is fairly tight as well. And you actually have to kind of walk the plates onto the bar. You can't just slide it directly on because with the collars of this bar, see if I can show you guys. You can kind of tell in the video, but it's basically like a rubber textured material. It's like a rubber material. So it's not metal, um, except for the very end cap here, but it's not metal, so plates don't slide over it easily. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so the plates don't slide onto it very easily. Ugh, dirty. Um, which makes it a little bit more difficult to get those machined plates or anything with a tight center hole tolerance onto it. Like I said, on the website, they don't recommend using them. I think they might even state that it's not compatible with them, but I haven't had any fit issues with regards to any of my deep dish plates or my calibrated plates. Um, they do all fit onto it. It's just not easy. It's not a great time getting them on and off. So. With this bar, ideally you're gonna be using either like bumper plates um, or just 
cheap metal plates that have a fairly loose center hole tolerance. It does kind of suck, but once you get used to using them, it's not too bad. It's just kind of that first few times that you try and slide them on and off, it is a little bit funky. It's just kind of really, it's really tight. It's probably one of the only circumstances in which a tighter hole is not better. <laughs> I'll see myself out now. <laughs> Uh, but no, that is just kind of one of the big downsides if you have calibrated or machined plates is just kind of keep that in mind. Again, fully usable, still workable, just not, not great. Now something that could be considered both a positive and a negative of this bar is the diameter of the shaft. It's got a nice thick shaft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I couldn't say that with a straight face. But it has a one and a half inch diameter shaft, meaning that it's gonna be much thicker than your traditional barbell, but at the same time, it's not gonna be quite as thick as like an axle bar, which has typically a two inch diameter shaft. So with regards to that, that means that it's gonna work your grip strength a hell of a lot more if you're doing any kind of pulling movement, such as rows, deadlifts, anything like that. It's going to really tax your grip strength. Um, especially if you don't add any kind of like grip tape or texture or anything to the bar itself, it's gonna just annihilate your grip strength. Now, when it comes to pressing movements, in my opinion and from my experience, I like the extra thickness of the bar. It feels a lot more comfortable in my hands, it sits on my hands a lot better, and it just feels a lot better on my wrist. Again, that could be a positive, it could be a negative, it depends on what your point of view is. Overall for me though, I like the extra thickness compared to a traditional barbell, so it's not a huge issue for me. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk a little bit more about why I love this bar so much. And let's be real, it's because it instantly adds 35 pounds to your max. The bar only weighs 10 pounds, but nobody knows that unless they know what bar it is, so it instantly looks like you're lifting an extra 35 pounds. Am I right? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of nice for the gram and stuff, but realistically, the reason I love this bar so much is just in how it feels. It's because it flexes with every single rep, it causes your core to engage, it causes your stabilizers to engage. I just love how different it feels when compared to a traditional barbell. It's so much more unique than anything else out there that I've ever used that it just has its own experience with it. It's hard to really explain. You can kind of see what I'm talking about with some of the videos, but overall, I just love the way it feels. It, again, it causes you to activate a little bit more on every single rep, and it just feels good. I don't really know how else to explain it. They do state on the website that it's supposedly like better on your joints and muscles and ligaments and all these things and yada, yada, yada. Whether or not that's true, I really don't know. I've never had any joint issues, any major injuries that I've had to recover from, knock on wood. Uh, knock on wood. <laughs> so from that regards, I've never had like issues with my wrists, my elbows, my shoulders, head, shoulders, knees and toes. I've never had any issues. So I, I can't say whether or not that's true. For me though, I definitely could see how beneficial it would be if regard, when, with regards to recovering from an injury, because again, it's forcing so many more muscles around those joints to activate. So as long as you're keeping things light, I can definitely see how it would be beneficial to add in for recovering from a specific injury. Um, but overall, the reason that I like it so much is just in how unique it is. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. I'm not gonna get into all the different loading dynamics of the bar, or how to load the bar, all the different variations you can use it for, and so on and so forth. I'll do separate dedicated videos for each of those topics. This has basically just been a review of the bar and my experience using it over the past year or so since I've owned it. And overall, if you're interested and considering this bar, I would highly recommend it. Two thumbs up for me. I personally love it. It's one of my favorite specialty bars I've ever used. And it's just so unique when you compare it to anything else out there. Now, if you're considering the RhinoFlex or the Earthquake bar and you only have the space for one of them, if you've got the fun, space, whatever it is for both of them, go out and get both of them. They're both great, amazing bars. If you can only have one, I personally, and this is the choice that I made, I would go for the RhinoFlex bar. Again, it's so much more versatile than the Earthquake bar. You can use it for any movement that you can with a traditional barbell, that it just wins my vote in that regard. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. It definitely helps out, it helps show your support for the channel. And if you guys wanna see more videos on this bar, on all the equipment I have in the gym, so on, 
all that stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Maybe ring that bell so you can be notified whenever a new video goes live. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.